the whole area of uh, drunk driving and reckless driving, uh, I, I don't comprehend what our national response is to that. Now, we're right now in the, what, fifth or sixth year of this huge debacle we started in Iraq over the bombing of the World Trade Center where 3,500 Americans were killed, which was hideous. But since that time, every year we kill 30 or 40,000 people with our automobile. You know, 10 times as many every year, and a good number of those are killed by drunk drivers or reckless drivers, people who've made a conscious choice that their convenience is more important than the safety of others. And we don't seem to have any national urgency about that. You know, uh, it's a hundred people every single day wiped off the face of the earth. Uh, and we don't want to be inconvenienced, so we don't say anything about it. And it's guys like uh, Bob and Ariel who have paid a price for that. You know, I think if we had a uh, 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 the, the Vietnam War Memorial has 58,400 and some odd names on it. I don't know the exact number. I think if we put a wall up and put the names of everybody who's been killed by a drunk driver, where would you put it? You know, uh, 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 all along the border of, of the, the U.S. and Canada, would that be enough? 20 foot high, it would, be, it would go on forever. It'd circumnavigate the earth. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what we can do about it, but I'm I'm tired of it. Ready when you are, BC. For the, for this, even the small amount of time that I worked with Bob um, on the movie, it was just it really felt a loss um, because there was just something about him. He was always just that funny, laid-back guy, and he told you what to do. And he was real. He knew what he wanted, and, and he he worked with you to get what he wanted out of you. Um, and I, I will always remember. Um, when we were done shooting up on the mountain, um, how he used to jump on the slide and take the slide down the mm -hmm. stairs, and the whole mountain would move. <laughs> it would just kind of lean a little bit. And that's one of my fondest <laughs> memories of him is doing that. And the, the first time I met him was when I was getting fitted for my costume. And he came, you know, rumbling in, and he wanted to see the hats for the elves. And I'm standing there, and they put this thing on. <laughs> And he goes, well, I want you to shake your head and do this and that bell sitting. And go, oh, no, that's, that's got to be longer. It's got to be right in his face. Hurry oh, up. The store's oh, closing. But, uh, my first experience with him and working with him was just, it was great. It was a great experience for me. Oh, I wish, I wish we had this, this footage, but when we were doing the dinner scene, um, one of the things Bob liked was that laugh that I had. <laughs> so he didn't want to fake the laugh. He wanted the laugh. So in order to get that, he had to make me laugh. So there's just some great, this great shot that I remember seeing in the dailies of me at the table and just Bob running in and just tickling the hell out of me and then jumping out of camera and just running back in and tickling me some more. I mean, reality is Bob was 12. He may not have been in, in years or in his experiences, but his mental outlook on life was a child. He really was, he was a kid inside. You know, we're all kids inside to a certain extent, but Bob really had always, I think, held on to that feeling of 
his childhood, especially with this project. I, I have really wonderful memories of Bob, and uh, I, 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 I get reminded of that when I see his films, especially Christmas Story at Christmas time. I mean, that to me personifies Bob. Um, because he is that he is that main character, you know, with the glasses and the kind of gleam in his eye. That's Bob.